Say, my heart. Hear the word of the Lord. Prosper by fire. In the name of Jesus. Jesus name we pray Father we thank you for a time like this and we thank you for your grace which has brought your people here accept our thanks in the name of Jesus Father as many as are gathered into this meeting whether the enemy likes it or not whether it is convenient for your enemy or not the anointing of divine acceleration. The anointing to go forward. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. You will open your mouth. Shout your name the way I'm going to shout my own. Yes, as you are shouting. Body, soul, and spirit, hellfire, even they are hearing your voice. Daniel Olukoya, hear the word of the Lord. Go forward by fire in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and decree it. Jesus name we pray Father continue to lay your hands upon us and anoint us by your power in Jesus name we pray let's have a seat God bless you today we're taking everybody here into a school of deliverance. The school of deliverance. And you will do well to pay close attention. Some come to church with a situation. The situation disappears and goes away. But after a while, after a while, they notice that that problem that went now starts to find its way back. Why? Why should somebody come with a situation? Maybe a, maybe a sickness, maybe an emotional distress. Then eventually, after those things have gone, the sort of stage what looks like a comeback and sometimes they even now kill the person there are two explanations number one explanation is incomplete deliverance medication a patient 
that did not complete the medication. It's like somebody with malaria or insanity. And they say, take this tablet two times a day. Oh, you take it once a day and you feel better. And you leave it off. Then the sickness now comes back. Because you did not complete the medication. There are plenty of people who come to church like that. The reason they are behaving strange and funny is because they never completed the medication. That is one thing that causes the problem. The second one is the problem of cryptic demons. The problem of cryptic demons. They just hide. When you pray, they dodge. They hide this. They try and enjoy the fire you are pouring on them. They know that you will soon stop the prayer. Then they now come back. So, today, we are looking at the battle against cryptic demons. Let's see an example of it in scripture. In 1 Samuel chapter 19, 1 Samuel chapter 19, you see a very interesting story. 1 Samuel chapter 19. I read from verse 23. First Samuel 19:23. And he went thither to Nihot and Rama. This is Saul, the rejected king of Israel. And the Spirit of God was upon him also. And he went on and prophesied until he came to Nahot in Rama. Spirit of God came upon Saul, was prophesying, was prophesying. But something strange happened in the next verse. Verse 24. And he stripped off his clothes also and prophesy before Samuel in like manner and lay down naked all that day and all that night wherefore they say he saw also among the prophets here was a man prophesying prophesying by the spirit of God but at the same time removing his clothes and rolling on the floor naked two spirits on a man two spirits on a man the spirit of God was using him the devil also was using him that thing was inside of him it remained cryptic until something happened and it provokes it out the battle against cryptic demons demons are unconfined fallen angels Fallen angels that can't confine. And there are various hierarchies. Their job is to assist the devil in the various wickedness that he does. 
the Bible says demons are evil, unclean, and very wicked. They are intelligent, they are emotional, they are verbal, they are purposeful. Do you know what they are doing? Very, very cunning. They are tempters. They are liars. Sometimes during prayers, you will hear them shout, Man of God, leave us alone. We have gone out. Now, if you have gone out, why are you still talking? Demons can be violent, they torture people. They are murderers. If you go into the psychiatric hospital, you see a lot of demonic activities which drugs cannot deal with. Demons are shapeless spirits, always looking for human bodies to live in. They oppose God and they wage war against his people. Majority of the sicknesses and disease they are from, from the hands of the demons. They seek to invade human bodies. When they are able to take over the life of a person, they now begin to control that person. The person's personality will change. The person's behavior will change. And you wonder what has happened to this person. That's what deliverance ministers call possession. This, the demons have come in. And they've taken over the life of the person. I'm praying for anyone here listening to me. Whether here or anywhere. But if the enemy has taken possession of your life, they must lose their hold in the name of Jesus. They must lose their hold in the name of Jesus. They must lose their hold in the name of Jesus. Now, cryptic demons. They are secret demons. Ambiguous demons. That is, they are capable of more than one interpretation. Masquerading demons. They are there. They are hiding. Mis mysterious demons. They often mask themselves with complicated cover. Some deliverance means I call them coded demons. Dark demons. Confounding demons. Camouflaging demons. Concealing demons. No wonder the Sami says the strangers shall fade away and they shall be afraid out of their close places. These are demons hiding in close places. They can escort a man or a woman from the cradle to the grave. They can remain hidden in their life until certain situations provokes them. They could barricade themselves from a barrage of spiritual attacks. Could go for deliverance, go for deliverance, go for deliverance. So keeps dodging, dodging the deliverance press, staying hidden. They stay hidden and until they are thoroughly and truthfully challenged. 
It is that challenge you need to start with this morning. <laughs> when you challenge them, then they will have to react. But you have to challenge them properly. We have seen decent people nicely dressed, three men dressed in three piece suit, looking very nice. And by the time prayer started, the demons have shouted back at us. So why did we come here today? We have been hiding in this life for years. He's an elder in the church. We tried to make him not to come here. Oh, why did we come to this place of fire? So the thing was inside him. It did not prevent him from preaching. It did not prevent him from doing Bible lesson. He did not prevent him from leading praise worship. That's the example of them. <laughs> Stay there hidden. 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 Waiting for your unguarded hour. Then they come out. Then you begin to wonder what happened. Oh, this man is a pastor. What happened? What happened? It's because there were cryptic demons hiding, hiding in their lives. Hiding there. And building a stronghold for themselves. The cryptic demons could be resistance to all kinds of attacks. They will call one weapon, they're there. Call another weapon, they're there. Call another weapon, they're there. Until you get to the particular weapon that enters their blood, then there is a violent reaction. They have the capacity to lie low for a long time as if they are not there. I feel sad as I talk to you today of my times as a young believer when I was very very ignorant. A wedding ceremony. The wedding was concluded. And they were dancing outside with the popular music. They were dancing out. Immediately they stepped outside the church. The bride began to tear the garment. They rushed at her to prevent her from tearing herself naked. But she overpowered them, tore herself naked and ran. With only an underwear. The bridegroom started to cry. But crying does not impress demons. We were so ignorant. We didn't know that it was a demonic attack. Then we said, they said, she ran mad on the day of her marriage. No, she did not run mad. That was a cryptic demon. With an instruction. Stay there. Stay there. Immediately she's married. Manifest. That was what happened that day. If I know what I if I, if I knew what I know now then, will I be able to step in and say no? You the stubborn spirit husband walking through the cryptic demon, let her go. A command like that will have caused deliverance. And there will have been joy that day. Looking back now, I feel really sad. I wish I knew more. 
I will have been able to step in and begin to act. That was the first one. Ignorance is a disaster in the spirit realm. There was another one. There was a wedding. And the, 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 will you take this man as a wedded husband to love and to cherish till that do you part? The woman said, no. The pastor thought she didn't hear it very well. She read it again. The Lord, we are gathered here to join these two in the holy matrimony, which is a holy estate, blah, 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 blah. So, will you take brother so, so, and so as so, a word of man? Say, I said, no. All of us, ignorant people, <laughs> ignorant people sitting there, didn't know she was seeing a spirit husband telling that if you say yes, you are gone. If I knew what I know now, then you come to the altar of mountain of fire. And you are at our altar, and they say you, did, you were not drunk before you came. And you got there, you are saying no. You are saying no problem. Just wait. Just take her to the back. Pour some fire prayer on her head. Then return her to the same altar. Ask the question again. That's what we should have done in those days. But we didn't know any better. I'm praying for anyone here. If there is a hidden stranger in your spirit that has been troubling your life in hiding, receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus. Receive it, 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 receive it. Let your heaven roll like thunder. Receive it. Receive it. Something is happening already. Receive it. Makapota lakaya bo shendera bo sanda. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Listen. The first man in the Bible to bring an acceptable offering unto God was a man called Abel. After Abel was then men began to build altars to God. In the wilderness, the children of Israel, they had tabernacles. God taught them how to make that tabernacle. Although the tabernacle was a shadow of heavenly things. So all the time they were going about in the, in the wilderness, they were carrying the tabernacle about, they carrying the tabernacle about. When Israel eventually settled in a land, they needed a place of worship. David conceived the idea of building a temple. God said, no. Your child will build it. You cannot build it. Because you are a man of war. And you have shed too much blood. So Solomon was the first one to build the first temple. That was a problem. That time, God was in a place God was not in their lives. So they messed up. God was inside the temple. But not in their lives. So they messed up. That temple that Solomon built is indescribable to the modern day man. What happened to that temple? It was destroyed. God folded his hands and worship be destroyed. 
was destroyed by the Babylonians. 70 years after that temple was destroyed, the Israelites came back from captivity. They tried to rebuild the temple. It didn't look like the former one again. It did not have the majesty of the first one. It didn't have the glory of that first one. During the time of Jesus, Herod the Great began to renovate that temple. That temple. He spent 46 years to renovate the temple. Yet, Jesus looked at the temple and said, do you see this temple standing there? A time is coming. There shall not be one stone upon each other that will not be thrown down. Jesus said it will be destroyed. And it was destroyed. Even while the temple was standing, men energized by the devil messed up the temple by doing the wrong things they were buying and selling inside the temple. So the Bible talks about only three temples. The temple that Solomon built. The second temple that Herod repaired. But God watched those two temples destroyed. He stood by and watched it destroyed. Because there is a third temple. It is that third temple that is our interest today. What is that third temple? In Acts chapter 7, verse 48. Acts chapter 7, verse 48. This is uh, a deep proclamation. Very powerful statement. Acts chapter 7 from 48. Or let's say from 47. <laughs> but Solomon built him a house. Albeit, the most I dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Accept the prophet. Heaven is my throne. Earth is my footstool. What house will you build me? Said the Lord. Or what is the place of my rest? Has not my hands made all these things? Listen very, very well. The third temple is the temple of our life. Our life. Temple. So as you are there, you are the temple of the most high God. A place where God wants to dwell. The Bible says, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. A man is a spirit living in a body and having a soul. He's a spirit. You are basically a spirit living in a body and having a soul. You see, that body now, body, has three departments. It has three departments. The flesh, the bones, and the blood. The flesh, the bones, and the blood. All those three areas that I just mentioned can be inhabited by demons. They can, be, they can become habitation of bondage. Those three areas in a man's life can be caged. That is why it's possible that a demon is in the flesh because the demon is not in the spirit. 
The person is speaking in tongues. No, he's speaking in tongues is from the spirit. But the demons are tormenting the body. Tormenting the body. So the body can be inhabited by unclean spirits. And when they get into a person's body, they have three places, a choice of three places. Either the flesh, or the bones, or the blood. I'm praying for anyone listening to me. Like the Bible says, as soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. Strangers shall submit themselves unto me. The strangers shall fade away and they shall be afraid out of their close places. Every stranger in the flesh, every stranger in the bones, every stranger in the blood, get out now in the name of Jesus. Receive your deliverance. 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 In the name of Jesus. A louder amen. Now, the soul. Soul. That one too is divided into three. <laughs> three. And all three can be in bondage. All three can become habitation of the devils. The soul is divided into, the, into three. Number one, the mind. Number two, the will. And number three, the emotions. The mind. What somebody is th- thinking about in that mind can be infiltrated by bad spirits. Some people come and say, Pastor, I don't know why. I'm always thinking evil. I'm always thinking evil. The reason you are thinking evil is because you are evil. It has entered the heart. Enter the mind. Then the will. It's also an arena where the enemy can take control. Just be controlling the person. Takes over the will of the person. But you take the wrong decision, go to the wrong place, marry the wrong people, go to the drink the wrong things, eat the wrong things, is just controlling the will of the person. What a, what a shame that a lifeless object like alcohol, alcohol that cannot talk, cannot walk, that alcohol in the bottle will be controlling a fully grown man, throw him into the gutter, throw him all over the place. We just came back for, from, from the United States of America. It is, this, it, is this, it is very, very depressing to see people walking on the streets that drugs have destroyed. They walk like zombies on the streets. They remove their clothes. They roll on the floor. They stagger on, on the streets. Daylight. It's a shame. Lifeless object like cocaine, marijuana is now controlling a whole you. But it's not their fault. It's a spirit behind it. This creature is made subject to vanity. Then the emotion can be caged by the enemy. Demons are inside the emotion of the person. In this morning, you start crying. In this morning, you are scared. Nobody threatens you, you are afraid. The emotion is in, is in turmoil. All those three areas can be inhabited by demons. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. Can be cryptic. 
That's what I said. Somebody will say, What? I'm shocked. I've never seen this side of this man. You can know this side of this woman. Who was there? And hide it. So the mind, the will, and the emotion can be habitations of bondage. Then the spirit now. The spirit too has three departments. All three departments can be occupied by God, can also be occupied by the enemy. The first department is knowledge. Second department, communication. Third department, conscience. Knowledge. Communication. Conscience. Conscience can be inhibited. Knowledge can be inhibited. Communication can be broken. Conscience can be compromised. Demons can say in any of those three departments. And this is why we need serious prayers. Which we cannot conclude today. We have to continue at the next palm of changes. When, when, when demons are attacking human beings, they have 10 modes of attack. 10 modes of attack. Number one is the strike and go. They will strike the person. They will run away. You will be able to know where the attack is coming from. They come back and strike again. You strike and go. You strike and go. I'm praying for somebody here. Every power that is hiding in darkness to strike you and go back into hiding. I bury them now in the name of Jesus. It's a good for the man. Two. The heat and run. Those one will hit a person. Wound the person dangerously. And run off. They don't come back. Those ones don't come back. They're different from the strike and go. Strike and go. Three. The Bible calls something fiery die. That. Fiery that. They don't move close to you. They don't stay far away. I begin to fire the arrows. Fire the arrows. Fire the arrows. And the person will not know what is going on. That's why we pray a lot of backfire, backfire, backfire here. And the reason they hide behind arrows is because they don't want you to know where it is coming from. The reason they are using arrows, arrows. The person will be feeling the arrow, but who won't know where the arrows are coming from. When you say backfire, you didn't create the arrows. You just ask it to go back. So it goes back to where it's coming from. Firing that of the enemy. I'm praying for anyone here that is consciously or unconsciously incubating any arrow of darkness. I command the arrows to backfire in the name of Jesus. They must backfire. They must backfire. They must backfire. They must backfire. In the name of Jesus. The fourth mode of attack. We call it strong old. They build a strong old in a person's life. It's like they have built a house, a flat. 
prepared to stay with the person till the person dies. Call it stronghold. The fifth one is the guardian spirits. They, they just follow the person about. Go to interview, they fail the person. Go to exam, they remove the papers. He wants to do marriage, they scatter it. They, they are the owners of bad luck. Evil guardian angels. Which in Nigerian English we call evil follow follow spirit. Follow the person. They follow the person to the place of breakthrough and make sure the person does not have anything to, to, to rejoice about. And it's a very terrible matter. Sometimes when people come for counseling and you see the spirit following them. Following them, following them. We don't scare people in mountain of fire. We give them, we give them prayers instead. But sometimes it can be quite scary what you see following some people. I've seen a man being followed by a crippled person with rags, bundle of rags on the head. This is a professor. I didn't want to scare him. But when he began to talk, I now understood. He had put all the retirement benefit, everything into one business to import things to Nigeria. And the ship sank. It is not this it is the ship did they, nothing destroyed that ship. It's that rag demon. Six. The cursing power. They rely on curses. Their duty is just to ensure that the curse issued on the person comes to pass. They are there to make sure that that curse is done. That's one mode of attack. Seven is the marriage power. They marry the person of in the spirit. Eight is a covenant power. Person forms a covenant. And that covenant is they say, well, you made a covenant with us, you can't go. You, are, you made a covenant, you can't go. Then the night one is the staying power or staying or gluing power that glues them together so you can't separate yourself from these powers. This is common with those who have come from family where they worship idols. The idol power has been with them since they were in the womb, has been with them all their lives. It stayed glued. And the final one is the cryptic power to just hide, hide, not allowing themselves to be exposed until they just start trouble. Today, you and I, we have prayers to pray. We need to pray from our heart. The prayer against cryptic demons is not the normal prayer. The kind of prayer that provokes them to jump out is the prayer where your hand will know you are praying. Your leg will know you are praying. Your body will know you are praying. Certainly, 
Certainly, if you are addressing cryptic demon, you can't be praying like this. Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. They are wasting time. They just be laughing at you. But when you strike out like blind Bartimaeus, I said, look here. My life is not your tabernacle. You are in the wrong place. I challenge you to depart. Then you started the warfare. You declare the war. Close your eyes where you are now. All eyes closed. But you see, if you are here this morning, you are not born again. You have not surrendered your life to Jesus. You cannot rebook any cryptic demon. I don't want to deceive you. So wherever you are, why all eyes are closed? Say, Pastor, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Get up on your seat and find a way straight to the altar here. Jesus is waiting for you here. Do it very quickly. For the next few minutes, let your hands pray. Let your spirit pray. Let your body pray. The prayer against cryptic demons is not a gentleman's prayer. Your hand must know you are praying. Your body must know you are praying. Every organ of your body must know that you are challenging something. This is why you must roar with violent anger like this. Fire of God! Blood of Jesus! Can you shout those two things loud? Your voice is not loud enough. Sanitize my life! In the name Bocatella Kaya Boshende Rabo Santa Ribo Sopole Kaya Boshente La Catenda Kaya Bosanda. Today is today. Every demon of infirmity. Lose your hold. 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 The Pata Satana Kayaba. Let your voice roar like thunder. Something is happening now. Let your body pray. Let your soul pray. Jesus. Silence now. We have issued challenge. And it's happening now. The power of God is provoking them out of their hidden places. The demon of infirmity. The demon of the spirit husband. That spirit that enter into you from your mother's womb. The arrow of envious witchcraft. The slow poison in the body. That's the fire of God. That's the fire of God coming upon you.
You can't hide. You can't hide. Bakate la kaya Shout this loud too. Any spirit of grave in my body. Come out now. In the name of Jesus. Command the spirit of grave to come out. Yes, sir. The one in the head, the one in the eyes, the one in the chest, the one in the womb, the one in the legs. Out, 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 out. Jesus name we pray. Say my body, my spirit, my soul. Can you shout that loud? Make your voice the loudest here. Receive the fire of God in the name of Jesus. your right hand towards this altar now. Father, let your power fall upon these hands. Let these hands become divine battle acts. As you use these hands today, any stranger in the body, any cryptic demon, every hidden sickness, Every hidden poison. As you use your hand, and they shall be melted away in the name of Jesus. Father, let this hand become the hand of healing, the hand of fire, the hand of deliverance. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to count seven from here. Smite your head, which is the symbol of your destiny. Smite it aggressively. Even if you are having a headache, don't worry. Your, your head is a symbol of your destiny. I'm going to count one to seven. You will shout fire at the top of your voice and smite that head. That fire will now introduce fire into your body, soul, and spirit to chase away the strangers in the temple. One. 
Christ's mighty to work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven.